The Newlywed Game is coming to Cincinnati. Northgate Mall and Channel 5 presents The Newlywed Game at the Mall Friday, September 13th. TV personality Bob Eubanks will be on hand as area newlyweds compete for prizes like a VCR from Bill Schwartz Home Electronics and gift certificates. It's all happening live at Northgate Mall on the 13th. The fun starts at 7.30 p.m. Come out to the mall and watch The Newlywed Game live, Cincinnati style. It's champagne wishes and caviar dreams on lifestyles of the rich and famous. The amazing 6,000-mile marriage of Falcon Crest star Sarah Douglas. How Hill Street Blues super jock Ed Marinaro turned tragedy into triumph. And Jefferson's queen Isabel Sanford shopping spree down Rodeo Drive. Plus the winning ways of sports mogul Jerry Buss. And how the name Mary Kay Ash spells cash. The thrills continue on lifestyles of the rich and famous. Saturday night at 7 here on Channel 5. Carmen de Leon and the Strauss Orchestra transport you to the age of romance. The Oktoberfest 10th Anniversary Ball. For information, call 579-3150. Five away from the greatest hit of all time. The Cincinnati Reds are on the air. The fun, the action, the excitement of Major League Baseball with the Cincinnati Reds. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Buy Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your Toyota dealer. Oh, what a feeling. And by Long John Silver's Seafood Shops, now featuring new Ocean Chef Salad. Wrigley Field, Chicago. The sun is out. Pete Rose is in town. The Reds trying to keep pace with the Dodgers and pick up ground. Boy, there's a lot going on. Joe Morgan's here. I'm Ken Wilson, and Steve Fiziak is on hand. It's a cast of thousands, literally, this weekend here at Wrigley Field. The bad thing about it, Ken, is they want to talk to me when they can't get to Pete. <laughs> you got all you got all the comments. Pete Rose has 200 people around him. Joe Morgan has 100. What are you saying about Pete? I'm just telling him how great he is, and some guys are digging. Like I told you, they take too long, they start digging for dirt, saying Pete's not a good guy, and what did he do before this and that. I, I just don't like it, but really, Pete's the star of the show, and he should be that way. Well, we're going to look for your quotes in the next few days in the <laughs> national papers, and I hope you're not misquoted too often. Pete Rose, five hits shy of breaking Ty Cobb's all-time hit record. We mentioned Steve Fiziak being with us, and Steve has some thoughts on Pete Rose. We have all heard about Pete Rose, Ken Wilson, and about the 34 major league records that he does hold, but he says he has one more that he wants to attain, and we all know what that is, 4,191. But that is just one of the stories pertaining to today's ball game here at Wrigley Field. Another gentleman who went to the same high school as Pete Rose, Western Hills High School, is Jim Fryan. He's the manager of the Chicago Cubs, and he is going through a troubled time in 1985 after winning the National League East title one year ago. We'll talk with Jim Fry this afternoon about his current situation, and also talk with Pete Rose about his pursuit of Ty Cobb's all-time record. Let's right now go back to Ken Wilson. While Pete Rose is being watched by the entire world, Joe Morgan, Pete's still trying to keep his ball club in it and trying to catch the Dodgers. Well, therein lies the reason that Pete has been so successful this season. He keeps his teammates thinking about catching the Dodgers, even though all the media attention is going toward Pete, and that's why he's been successful. And for Mario Soto, he's trying to win again. He picked up a win in his last start at home last Sunday. Well, Mario's the type of pitcher. He gets things going. He can win five, six, seven ball games in a row, and that's what the Reds are looking for at this stage of the season. And the Cubs, of course, continue to struggle. Well, let's don't start now. Let them stay struggling for two or three more days. Atmosphere, that's the name of the game in Chicago. Plenty of media. Pete Rose, counting down, needs only five now to catch Ty Cobb and pass it. So that's the story. We're going to take a local break and be back with more here at Wrigley Field. So now, this time out. At Delta... We could talk about our airplanes, some of the best maintained, most modern birds in the sky, or our schedules, over 1,500 flights a day worldwide, or our flight centers, the airports of the future. But none of that is as important as people. And when it comes to the Delta professionals, the people who make Delta as great as it is, well, one smile is worth a thousand words. Delta gets you there. Catch the cats if you can. 
some people will tell you there's more to life than sports. There's not. Join Steve Fiziot weekdays at 5, 30, 6, and 11. There are over 150 members of the media here to watch Pete Rose move a step closer to Ty Cobb's all-time hit record. And one of the members of the media is our own Joe Morgan. Let's go to Joe right now with Pete Rose. Yes, Steve, thanks. Oh, yeah, Joe. <laughs> yeah, this is fun to follow you around. How do you feel about all these newspaper men around? I'm trying to get them away so I, we can do a personal and up well, close interview. This. Uh, this is the way it is in the uh, playoffs and World Series and All-Star games. You've been here as much as anybody else. But, uh, you know, if they want to make a big uh, deal out of me getting the hit, uh, you know, I'll cooperate with them. And, Pete, uh, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> well, I think uh, once I do it, I'll realize, uh, you know, it's the biggest the individual accomplishment that I could ever have. But uh, uh, maybe it's because I have so much other on my mind, you know, as far as trying to catch the Dodgers and get the right lineup out there and different things like that, uh, I really don't really have time to really worry or think about it because uh, if I'm going to get the base hits, I'm going to get them. It's just a matter I need five more. Last year you told me that there was no pressure. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, uh, I think the only pressure that, that we have in baseball, and I'm sure you agree, is the playoffs uh, because it's a, a situation where you play three out of five, and this year is four out of seven. But now if you have a, a hitting streak, there's a little pressure because anything in sports that uh, is involved with time uh, where you have to do something a certain night, uh, you're going to create pressure. In a hitting streak, uh, you have to uh, get a hit every night. Now this thing here, I mean, I can go 0 for 4 today, and I could go 3 for 4 tomorrow, or 0 for 4 tomorrow, or 4 for 5 Monday. So it's, uh, now if I had five uh, or six hits to go, and I only had one game to go and someone told me I'm going to play in 86 then that would be pressure because I'd have to get the hits that certain day so uh, that's why I look at that I'm not uh, planning on just getting five more hits this year yeah I agree with that but the, tr the problem with me is like when I was getting close to a record I stood up night stayed up nights thinking about it do you ever think about it you find yourself lying in bed at night thinking I need four more how am I going to get them will they be doubles triples home runs what do you do you ever think about that? no because uh, if, if that was the case I'd have never got any sleep my whole career because I, I went to bed every night thinking about baseball hits and uh, uh, like I said just a minute ago uh, I really don't think about just getting four or five more uh, you know I'd like to get uh, you know 100, uh, 125 hits this year or something like that because I feel if I do we'll have a better chance of winning I think the important thing here and people are overlooking is the fact that the job that you've done with the Reds and the way you talk now you're still concerned with the ball club first and yourself and your individual accomplishments second well we're only half a game in, uh, in second place Joe and I still think we have an outside chance of catching the Dodgers because this this, this series is very important for us because uh, they're playing the Mets who are red hot and they got to go to Atlanta and play a doubleheader and they got a doubleheader against us and uh, we got some single games so uh, you know, funnier things have happened in the, than the Reds uh, catching the Dodgers in 1985 and uh, I can never lose track of that because uh, I've been emphasizing that ever since I came back is what we do not what I do. If I get a vote you're going to be the manager of the uh, year as well as maybe even player of the year if you. Yeah but from what I hear you'll be the announcer of the year <laughs> so we both did pretty good in our new professions. Well thanks a lot Pete good luck okay, on the team we know what you're going to do as an individual. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. We'll come back and talk with the Cubs' Jim Fry after these words from your local stations. Give me a light. Go. Oh. Uh, light, light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Thank you. Because everything else is just a light. You want it, you got it at Universal. Get the things you want the easy way. Rent them from Universal TV and Appliance Rental. Rent name brand furniture and appliances from Universal for just a small weekly or monthly charge with no credit hassle or repair bills. Get the things you want the easy way. Call Universal right now. You want it? You got it at Universal. Last year, the Chicago Cubs were the National League East champions, but all five of their starters have been on the injured reserve list at one time or another this year. And the manager of it all is Jim Fry of the Chicago Cubs, who happens to come from Cincinnati. Ken Wilson is now with the manager of the Cubs. Here on the north side of Chicago this season, disappointment has been the word. Jim Fry, how do you express all of this disappointment? 
Well, how do I <laughs> how do I express it? I, I can tell you this has been a very frustrating year for all of us, and I think it all goes back to our expectations of having a good year. We started the season the first six weeks. We had gone into first place. We had a, a what I considered to be a terrific starting rotation. We had a team ERA at two five six. We had just started to hit the ball, and then. Everything kind of fell apart. We lost uh, three of our regulars. We lost Matthews, Dernier, and Davis. We lost five starters, and it's just been a very, very frustrating two or three months for us. If you look at the injuries, which there have been many, especially the starting pitching, and you evaluate for the rest of the way and next year, where are you left? Well, I think uh, given that our pitchers come back and are healthy next spring, which I expect that they're going to be, I think that we're going to be right back up where we should be. I think we can probably make a few moves this winter to change our ball club a little bit, but I think the strength of our team again next spring will be the pitching. What changes would you make if you could make some changes? Are you worried about age or specific positions? Well, in general, I mean, there's no sense in getting specific, but in general, I think it's important for every major league club to bring some young people in put some young bodies young legs young arms on the field I think we're going to have to think about that well, you've got a bit of an advantage now because you've seen people you normally wouldn't have seen well we're going to get a better look at some of our young pitchers of course we got eight pitchers off the triple A ball club up here we've got two or three position players up here we'll have a better idea at the end of the season whether they can figure into our plans and maybe that'll affect some of our trading how about the race in the National League East, your division, Mets and Cards, how do you see it? Well, I think that, uh, to me, their pitching staffs are pretty close. Uh, and you got Andahar and Gooden, they're both outstanding pitchers. The Cardinals got a couple other guys, Cox and, and Tudor, that are pitching very well. The, the Mets have, uh, of course, Darling and a couple other young guys doing well. I think it comes down to speed versus power. The Cardinals throw a lot of speed and defense at you. The Mets throw a lot of power. They got four or five guys can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, I don't know if I'd want to pick one of them. I'm not a betting man, so I'm not going to bet on either one. <laughs> but it's a great race. Now, Pete Rose comes to your ballpark, Wrigley Field. You being a Cincinnati native, it's got to be a little thrilling for you. I'd like to see him do it here, but I doubt very well. I can't say I doubt it, honestly, because he could go out and get four or five today. But, but uh, under normal circumstances, uh, if he doesn't pit play against a left-handed pitcher, on uh, Sunday, of course, it doesn't figure to do it here. I'd like very much to see it. I think it'd be a thrill. Uh, I've, uh, I've kind of watched Pete since he was a teenage kid. I've always admired his love of the game and the way that he carries himself as a professional. I think the people always say, what is the one ingredient of Pete Rose? I think there are two. Number one, he's worked awfully hard. Number two, he's loved every minute of it. Jim Fry, we know how much you love the game. Good luck in 1986 for you and the Cubs. Thank you very much. Jim Fry, skipper of the Chicago Cubs. It's been a tough year here on the north side, and that pretty well tells it all. That's the story, Steve. So it's Jim Fry's Cubs in fourth place in the National League East against Pete Rose's Reds, second place in the National League West. We'll come back with more baseball after these words from your local stations. Get into the pro football action. Come see the Cincinnati Bengals battle the Seattle Seahawks in their 1985 NFL season opener. Sunday, 1 p.m., September 8th at Riverfront Stadium. Tickets are on sale daily from 9 to 5 at Gate 9 of Riverfront and at all Greater Cincinnati Ticketron outlets. The Bengals and the Seahawks, Sunday, September 8th at Riverfront. Have you heard what Jerry Springer's been saying? On stopping terrorists. I don't see how we can interpret these brutal assaults on American citizens as anything but an attack on the United States. On Cincinnati's residency law. It's what an employee does while on the job that counts, not where he happens to bed down with his family at night. On school prayer. Well, it just doesn't matter. Those who want to pray will. Those who don't, won't. Jerry Springer's commentary on News 5 at 11. People make the difference. 
already, I'm sure, by just being with us for a few minutes, you've caught the atmosphere, the feeling that there is so much happening here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. We've got our cast of thousands. We're looking forward to a good ball game. But, Steve, it seems as though there, there's so much more than just the ball game today. Well, of course, Pete Rose, you've talked about that so much. I'm looking forward to seeing Derek Botello, a guy we haven't seen all year, a youngster, 29 years old, and trying to still make it in the major leagues. He's only has a 2-1 and one record in his career. Well, this is a Chicago Cubs team that has had all sorts of players that Jim Fry, as he mentioned, and uh, everyone in Chicago didn't expect to see. What's it like for a veteran player, Joe Morgan? Say a Ron Say who's out there playing now, not in a pennant race, looking at fellows that look like they're high schoolers to him, I'm sure. <laughs> well, in Ron Say's case, it's not really that tough because he's kind of fighting for his baseball career because if he doesn't finish strong, he may not be here in Chicago next year. And when you speak about Derek Botello, that poses a problem for Pete Rose. He does not like to hit against guys that he has not seen before, and especially a young guy who may be wild and strong. So it'll be interesting. What about Pete now? Is it one hit today, one hit tomorrow, and then back to Cincinnati needing three? Is that about the scenario, do you think? I would like for Pete to get two today, one tomorrow, and then go back to Cincinnati and get a couple. Hey, we, <laughs> this has got to be planned. Is this is this fun for Pete? I get the idea, Joe, that he's really enjoying it. He is really enjoying it. He says it's like a playoff atmosphere for him every day, which really helps hype him up and helps hype his team up. So I think the key thing here is for Pete to prolong it for a little while longer and let the Reds keep winning. And as far as the entire ball club is concerned, we've touched on the other players, the manager and player Pete Rose. And Steve, I know all of us have talked to a lot of the players, and I know today in depth you talked to a lot of the individuals, the lesser lights, so to speak. And is it good for them? Are they enjoying it? Are, are the young players able to slide through a little easier because of Pete? I think so. Guys like Wade Rowd and Mike Smith have just been called up from the minor leagues. They say it's kind of like a playoff atmosphere, the pennant race, the World Series, and we really have to understand what Pete Rose is going through to understand it ourselves when hopefully we'll face it in our futures. Well, it's an interesting situation and uh, what happens who knows. We're going to find out more today. I know everybody in Cincinnati is really thrilled, aren't they? The excitement back home is something. Yes, they are, but not only that, but they're still saying, hey, we're still in a pennant race. Eight and a half, we cut it to six and a half just two games ago, then lost those two big ball games to the Cardinals. A lot of feeling in the clubhouse talking with John Franco and Ted Power. They're saying, hey, it's our job to do the job, to be able Able to close the door when we get the lead. We haven't done it the last two games. Pete Rose counting down to surpass Ty Cobb. Uh, Derek Botello going for the clubs. Mario Soto trying to pick up another victory. Wrigley Field, big crowd, sunshine, baseball, apple pie, <laughs> cold bud, a cast of thousands. We're going to be back ready to play ball, so stay with us. It's all coming right up. Everyone who loves the thrill of championship racing, Budweiser presents the Columbus Ford Dealers 500. On October 4th, 5th, and 6th, you'll see one of the most exciting spectacles in all of sports. At speeds approaching 200 miles per hour, the world's most experienced drivers, featuring the Budweiser racing teams, will blast through downtown Columbus. Be there when Budweiser brings championship racing to the streets of Columbus. For ticket information, call 614-221-RACE. Cincinnati Reds baseball is being brought to you locally by your best quality four dealers who are having their final sell down on 7.7% financing on selected models and by Delta Airlines, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. Now is the final sell down at your best quality Ford dealer's biggest inventory sale in history. Because of the recent strike, they're overstocked and prices are slashed. Fantastic savings. Now is the final sell down on 7.7% financing on all new 85 Ford cars and trucks in stock. Or get a check direct from Ford for up to $1,000 on selected models. 7.7 financing or cash direct from Ford that could save you $1,000 or more. Hurry. Now is the final sell down at your best quality Ford dealer's now. Catch the cats if you can. Executive producer of Reds Baseball is Lou Rainoni. Director, Roy Alfers. Network coordinator, Tom Mills. This is a multimedia sports production on the Cincinnati Reds television network. The weather, as we mentioned, is fine. The lineups have been exchanged. Now our national anthem. By the dawn's early light, what 
so proudly wield at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets ripped clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still It is windy at Wrigley Field. Yeah, it's the Windy City. And when the wind is blowing out, that means usually some home runs. And on what has turned out to be a very pretty afternoon after a rainy morning, the wind generally is blowing out. So we could, Joe Morgan, see a little of the long ball. Yeah, this is uh, Wrigley Field at its kindest. As Ernie Banks would say, the friendly confines of Wrigley Field with the wind blowing out the left. And today it's blowing a little bit more straight out. So this is kind of day I like to play in Wrigley Field. Just let the hands go right to the end of the bat and start ripping, right? And hope you hit a pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> the umpires meeting at home plate. Bob Engel, the crew chief, is calling balls and strikes. Paul Runge at first base, Dave Pallone at second base, and Jim Quick around to third. The Cubs, of course, played last night in St. Louis, losing six to one. They had only two hits, and they have lost four in a row. The Reds enjoyed an off day yesterday. The Reds coming off the series in St. Louis. Their last game was Wednesday night when they lost four to three. And in fact, the Reds will come in having lost two in a row. Let's take a look now at the Chicago Cubs defensively for this afternoon's ball game. In left field, Thad Bosley, Bob Dernier in center, Keith Moreland in right, Ron Say, the third baseman, Sean Dunstan at short, Brian Sandberg, the second baseman, and Cincinnati product Leon Durham playing first. The catcher is Jody Davis, and right-hander Derek Botello is the pitcher. Well, there's Pete. The countdown at five. He will be hitting second in this ball game, and it's expected that he will start again here tomorrow afternoon in game two of the series against eight-game winner Dennis Eckersley. And Rose doesn't figure to play on Sunday as Southpaw Steve Trout is going to go in that one and then home on Monday against San Diego. And what a long year it has been for the Chicago Cubs. The Reds hoping to do well here in Chicago this weekend, and they have Eddie Milner leading off. Milner in center field. Then Pete Rose hitting second at first base. Parker is in right. Dave Parker hitting cleanup. Nick Isaski, he's the left fielder. Buddy Bell is at third base. The shortstop for the Reds today is Dave Concepcion. Bo Diaz, the catcher, bats seventh. Ron Oster hits eighth, playing second base, and the starting pitcher and ninth batter is Mario Soto. And on the mound today for the Chicago Cubs is Derek Botello. He's one of the young guys Jim Fry is going to look at to find out how he's going to fit in for next year's team. He's one and two with a 4.80 earned run average. This is, of course, his first start ever against the Cincinnati Reds. We mentioned the Cubs have been struggling, and that they have, as Jim Fry pointed out, since very early in the season. To be more specific about Chicago, they are six games under 500 and 18 and a half games behind first place St. Louis. 
copyrighted telecast comes to you through the courtesy of multimedia broadcasting authorized under television rights granted by the Cincinnati Reds solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds is prohibited. We're set to play ball, and there's nothing quite like Wrigley Field in Chicago. Lou Rainoni, Roy Alfers, the crew, Joe Morgan, Steve Fiziak, and yours truly, ready, and we hope you're ready to sit back and enjoy some Major League Baseball. Eddie Milner leading off against Botello in ball one. You do get a different feeling in a, from watching a ball game here in Wrigley Field. It's kind of like Boston's Fenway Park. Those are two special stadiums, and I really enjoy being in both. One ball, one strike now on Milner, that 256 average. Wasn't long ago, really, he was down around 215, 217. He has had an exceptional second half. The fastball up, and he powders it into center field. And the Reds have a base hit. Eddie Milner is one of the better fastball hitters in the National League, as we all know. And any time you throw him that high fastball, he will hack at it usually, and he lined it to center field on that pitch. Pete Rose getting a hand. And just as an asterisk to those of you who really pay close attention, that was Billy Hatcher who fielded the single in center field. So he obviously is a late replacement for Bob Dernier, who apparently was scratched. And here's Pete ready to go. And Pete takes a strike. As we talked in St. Louis the other night, I think the pressure is really starting to tell on some of the umpires when Pete Rose walks to the plate. Like I say, they do not want to make many mistakes and rob him of an at-bat, but by the same token, they want to be very fair to the pitcher. So it's a tough situation for the umpire to be in. It's like when a guy's going for a no-hitter. How impartial can you be behind the plate? Pete, I'm sure, enjoyed the off day yesterday. He had gone one for three Wednesday in St. Louis. And it's a two strike count on Rose. A look at Jody Davis. Good looking fastball. That's a big pitch. And Rose clearly questioning Bob Engel. What do you think, Joe? Well, that's what I'm telling you. It's a tough situation for an umpire to be in. I thought the pitch was close enough for Pete to swing because he usually doesn't take this pitch. I, I think it's a strike. That looked like a Pete Rose ground ball to short to me off right. that bat, and I thought it was a strike also. Yes, I don't think it was low. Davis had signaled and set up the target down and away, and Botello put it right on the money. Dave Parker. Milner at first base, one out, just underway at Wrigley Field. Parker, just a point under 300 with 25 homers, 95 RBIs. What a year. Milner goes, and it's fouled back. One strike on Parker. That's the difference between a Dave Parker hitting and say Pete Rose. Pete would have taken that pitch because Eddie had a great jump and would have probably stolen the base very easily. But Dave Parker, being a free swinger, attacks the ball every chance he gets. And, of course, in this ballpark, if he hits it, it's going out of the ballpark and you get two runs instead of one. So I don't think you should take the bat out of the big guy's hands. Parker, ninth in the league in average, third in home runs, and number one in RBIs. It's an interesting thing. Dave and I, about two weeks ago, were talking about what he would like to accomplish this season as far as league statistics are concerned. And the one thing that he mentioned that he was really like to lead the league in RBIs, and he was about fourth at that time. Down the line and left. And it's a fair ball into the corner. Milner already to third base. Here comes Milner. He'll score. Parker already has an RBI today. It is number 96. The Reds lead one to nothing. Parker, the key to his success this season, he's hit the ball all over, 
and he's been able to come through whenever the Reds have needed to hit. They get a guy in scoring position, he seems to become a tougher hitter, a la Tony Perez, and that's what makes him tough this year, and he's maybe he's going to reach that goal of leaving the league in RBIs this season. That hit lifts Parker into the upper echelon in hitting for average at 300. And Nick Isaski is the batter. And Nick takes the first pitch for a strike. I think Pete's getting Nick back in the lineup because of the small ballpark, knowing with the power Nick has, all he has to do is hit the ball decent and it'll go out of here. One ball, one strike. the first Leon Durham and now Sandberg calls him off and they're two away. Parker remains at second base. That's one of those plays where Leon Durham goes back like he wants to catch it but he really doesn't. He's going back looking for Ryan Sandberg all the way. He's saying Ryan come get this. <laughs> Here's Buddy Bell 204 a pair of home runs 15 RBIs. If you're keeping score with us and keeping the lineup card today. Erase Bob Dernier and insert Billy Hatcher leading off for the Cubs and playing center field. Dernier a last minute scratch. A good fastball, one strike. Another good fastball, two strikes on Bell. One, the one thing I've noticed about Derek Batello so far is that. His fastball seems to be more alive down low, which is usually the opposite. The high fastball usually has more movement on it from most pitchers, but his seems to move better down in the strike zone. And that'll do it. Three pitches. Bell watches them all, and two first inning strikeouts for Botello. The Reds get a run. They lead 1-0. This versatile Toyota cargo van has 155 cubic feet of cargo space to put to work. It's garageable and turns on a dime. Because it has the best MPG of any minivan, the average daily fuel cost is just $2.24. About the cost of one long stem rose, two pounds of ten penny nails, a brass elbow joint, or a can of shaving cream. Make a smart cargo van business deal at your Toyota dealer now. How you put it to work is your business. Okay, guess what this is? That's our topic. Dream come true. Five minute pizza, eh, for lunch. <laughs> Comes in your own personalized size, eh? Okay, lunch hour. Doot. Lunch hour. Okay, how long does it take to get over to the place, right? Uh, how Ten long? minutes. Ten minutes, okay. Uh, how long does it take? Okay, we're sitting down, we want to order a pizza. Oh, no, are we going to get back to work in time? Yes, why? We don't have jobs. credit, many of us would be forever coming up short, living in only 20% of a house, going on about half a vacation. At First National, we loan money for cars, money for houses. We'll even loan you a little fun money. So the next time you find yourself coming up short, come to us, First National Bank, Cincinnati. Here's a look at the Reds defensively. Nick Asaski, Eddie Milner, Dave Parker, Buddy Bell, Dave Concepcion, Ron Oster, Pete Rose, Bo Diaz, and the man on the mound, Mario Soto. The Cubs will have Billy Hatcher, Sean Dunstan, Ryan Sandberg, Keith Moreland, Ron Say, Leon Durham, Thad Bosley, Jody Davis, and Derek Botello against Mario Soto. And Mario's record this year is 11 wins, 15 losses. He has an earned run average of 3.46. He's one and one against the Cubs this year in eight and five lifetime. Soto faces Billy Hatcher, who's had some opportunity to play with the Cubs this year because of injury and has been up and down from the minor leagues. And he goes for that high one, one strike. Hatcher hitting 286, but he's had only 98 at bats. A homer, seven RBIs. He's a young man from Arizona, Billy Hatcher. And he's in the hole, two strikes. The 
Jazz really need a good performance out of Mario today, and Mario needs one for his own confidence. If he can get himself back on track, win this ball game, which will be two in a row, he's capable of winning five or six in a row after that, and that's just what the Reds need if they're going to try to catch the Dodgers. One ball, two strikes on Hatcher leading off the Cubs first. Reds to not add to that lead after they got the one run with Parker at second and one out and lead one nothing. Two and two. Oster to Rose. Hatcher is gone one away. It was a nice play by Ron. Anytime a guy hits the ball off the end of the bat, it has that reverse spin on it when it hits the ground. And Ron smothered, made a good play. Often I've seen that ball bounce away from the fielder. Here's Sean Dunstan. And you would have had to be out of the country since March not to have read a little bit about Sean Dunstan. Finally, when the Cubs were out of the race, they decided it was time to release Larry Boa and let Dunstan play. He has all sorts of talent. It's just a case of maturing and having that talent blossom. And he plays the toughest position in baseball for a rookie to learn to play, and that is shortstop. That's tough to be a rookie shortstop in the major leagues. Two balls the count on Dunstan. The veteran Soto against the youngster, just 22 years of age, Sean Dunstan. Two and one. That shot we're looking at there is from a camera on top of the scoreboard in straightaway center field here at Wrigley Field, which gives you an interesting perspective from time to time. This will go out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Well, I'll tell you something that might have been in the second deck on some days and it was in the second row today because the wind blew it back. That's how strong the wind is blowing out from home plate. And the pitcher that's able to keep the ball in the ballpark the most today will be the one that wins. You get a ball up in the air going toward left field today and it probably land across the street so. It's imperative that Mario keeps the ball down or at least make some pop ups if they go in the air rather than fly balls. A normal fly ball would go out of here today. A full count on Dunstan. You have led us right to how many home runs has Soto given up and it's a number that is very large. He's right. allowed 25 home runs in 33 starts. And that's in normal ballparks. <laughs> that's right. That's with the wind blowing in some days. <laughs> he strikes out Dunstan, and there are two outs here in Chicago's first inning. The thing that I've seen in Mario is that his release point seems to change a lot late in the game. He releases that ball perfectly, and the pitch before that he released too early, and the ball was very high. It seems that he loses his rhythm a lot more now than he did before. It's almost impossible to throw 150 pitches and have the same rhythm. But usually a good pitcher will only lose his rhythm for two or three pitches. Mario goes 10 pitches perfectly well, and then he'll lose one. And then he loses another. And he just hasn't been able to keep his consistency or his rhythm going. I think that's been the key to his lack of success the last few months. One ball to count on Ryan Sandberg, last season's National League most valuable player. He got off to such a slow start this year. He has come back very impressively later in the year. 2 and 0. Oh. That's a radar gun for the Cubs, I guess. One on Sandberg. Three balls and a strike. Don't forget, Sandberg has 22 home runs. He leads the Cubs in that department. 
and he's the team's leading hitter at 306 if you discount part time player Thad Bosley. Parker to the track on a ball that Sandberg just wristed off the end of the bat. Cubs go in order. An inning gone. Reds lead 1-0. Just ask for a light beer. I'll have a light. You never know what you'll get. That's me packing the car. Best vacation ever. Is Rock City, Texas, L.A. All in three days. A Bud Light. Here I am in Death Valley. That's me looking for water. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, wait, there's more. Ask for Bud Light, because everything else. Give me a light. It's just a light. That's me packing the car. Best vacation. Now is the final sell-down at your best quality Ford dealer's biggest inventory sale in history. Because of the recent strike, they're overstocked and prices are slashed. Fantastic savings. Now is the final sell-down on 7.7% financing on all new 85 Ford cars and trucks in stock. Or get a check direct from Ford for up to $1,000 on selected models. 7.7 financing or cash direct from Ford that could save you $1,000 or more. Hurry. Now is the final sell-down at your best quality Ford dealer's now. Hey, Cincinnati, it's time to celebrate. Along with Springdale and Covington, the grand opening of the new Value City department store. Save 20 to 50% off comparable retail prices. Designer sportswear, $9.99. Oversized shirts and denim jeans, $12.99. Men's designer suits, $79.99. Designer blazer, $39.99. Corduroy sport coats, $29.99. Girls London Fog jackets, $24.99 and $29.99. So don't miss the grand opening celebration at 5245 Ridge Avenue, Cincinnati. Some people like the taste of Coke, and some people like the taste of Pepsi, but some people go out of their way for the taste of RC. Reds get a run in the first inning. Oh, look at their dugout here. The Reds occupy the first base side here at Wrigley Field, just as they do at home at the Riverfront, and everybody looking forward to getting home on Monday night to face San Diego. Got those two makeup games now. Don't be confused by the original schedules. Monday the 9th, Thursday the 12th, games with San Diego that have been added. Here's Dave Concepcion leading off the second inning. Good breaking ball, a strike. If he controls that breaking ball like that to go with the good fastball he has, the Reds better be glad they got the one run early. That was a good slider. Davey hitting 250 with seven homers, 37 RBIs. One and one. For the viewers to watch Jody Davis, he's one of the best catchers I've seen at work in these young pitchers. He gives them a sign in, gives them exactly where he wants that ball thrown. And usually the target is always down, and he even gives them a hand signal to make sure they keep it down. Balls a strike. That's a good look of boy. That pitch. I'm telling Positioned you. <laughs> absolutely perfectly that slider. And it's, and he's got the great fastball to go with it. That makes you doubly tough when you have those two pitches. Because the one thing that makes a slider tough is that you don't have time to read the, the spin on it. And it moves out of the strike zone so quickly as we can see on that pitch. Now he's going inside. He's pitched him away away. Now he's coming in. Good pitch. Didn't miss by much. No, did that's he? a good pitch, but it was a good pitch. He threw it where he wanted. He went away with two pitches. Now he set him up inside for the fastball. Now, he, if David would have swung at that, he couldn't have done anything with it. I guarantee he'll try to go back away now. But he gets it inside. And Davey squirts it through into right field. The Cubs playing Concepcion the pole. And with the velocity of Botello and the breaking ball away, that's hard to imagine. And they're rubbing Davies' hands at first base. He heard him. He was trying to throw his fastball down the way, threw it up and in. Davy just fought it off and pushed it through the right side. That's the third red hit, and here's Bo Diaz. Bo in his 27th game with the Reds, and in a Cincinnati uniform, hitting 241. Cubs in double play depth. Durham holding there with Concepcion. 
Bo Diaz has always been a guy that likes to hit and run, and I think this would be a perfect situation for it, you know, to get him started here. Glad he didn't on that pitch. <laughs> 2 0 oh on the Reds catcher from Venezuela. He's going back to the dugout. He's thrown out attempting to steal. That's the 12th the, time this year. The tough thing about this is a hit and run, but it's a high fastball, and Bo can't make contact with it. But the funny thing about it, Derek Botello has had such good control with everyone else, he's missed real badly on three pitches to Bo Diaz. Davis throwing out Concepcion. Two and one. That'll go into the corner in left field. Bosley will hold Diaz to a single. Helms and Diaz apparently in a little disagreement there as to whether or not Diaz should have tried for two. Bosley generally quit defensively and got over there in a hurry. As well as Botello is throwing as Oster comes up, it's kind of hard to believe, Joe, that already the Reds have four hits. Reds are pretty good fastball hitters. I think that's the key. He's got great fastball, and he's going to get most guys out. But any time a guy features a fastball as his main pitch, you're going to hit some balls hard. It's just a matter of whether they go in or not. As Eddie Matthews once told me, he said, guys could hit a speeding bullet if it stays straight. So maybe that's the key here. His fastball is not moving as much as we think it is. Two balls, no strikes on Ron Oster. That 303 average for Oster. him the eighth leading hitter in the league. Three and oh. Diaz at first one out second inning one nothing Reds. one out and the batter will be Mario Soto. Ron Say going to the mound to talk to Botello. Now some people Joe Morgan would say Soto is an out. So let's bunt him over and hope that Milner can get the hit. Pete Rose, I would assume, would say, hey, it's early in the ball game. I just want to be swinging. Well, I think, you know, as they say, there's always two sides to every story. Pete goes with the bunt this time. Well, they were lucky to get him. Anybody else but Bo Diaz. And Botella would have never gotten the runner at third. And Diaz limps back to the dugout. Diaz that, is hurting. This is actually a good bunt by Mario. The ball bounces high in the air. Derek makes a good throw. He is out. But as you mentioned, anyone but Bo Diaz, and that's he's safe at second base, third base. There it is again. Diaz limped all the way back to the dugout. He slid a little late going into third, and I think he probably jammed his ankle a little bit. He didn't hurt himself running there, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> two on, two outs for Eddie Milner, who's single leading off the game, and he just blasts one down the line foul. I think he's showing him that he can hit his fastball. at second Soto at first two away second inning Reds lead the Cubs one to nothing Pete Rose is on deck he took a called third strike in the first inning one ball one strike
strike on Milner. Red second in the West. They're only eight and a half behind the Dodgers. The problem, of course, is that there aren't that many games left. Three and one, and Botello falling behind many hitters here in the second inning. He seems to have just lost his control starting the second inning. He was hitting all the spots early, even on Davey Concepcion. He made a one bad pitch on Davey, and he sort of went, he got wild after that. I don't know what the problem could be. Maybe he doesn't throw good from a stretch. And that one off Milner's bat falls in. Oster scores. They drop the ball. Soto hitting third. And Soto will come in to score. Milner is at third base. Three to nothing, Cincinnati. As I said, Miller is one of the best fastball hitters in the league. He gets the high fastball again, and he drives it in the right center field. Moreland tries to cut it off. He can't. By the time he picks the ball up and gets it back to the infield, Mario Soto has scored, and Milner goes in the third with a triple. Milner with 25 RBIs now. And the batter's Pete Rose, and he swings and fouls the first pitch away. One strike. Struck out in the first inning. A chance to add to his club's three to nothing lead here in the second. One and one. As we talked in St. Louis, why Pete had a few problems with Andujar was because he mixed his pitches so well. By contrast, as I told you, most teams throw him all fastballs and go at him with hard stuff. And he's only seen a fastball from Derek so far. He doesn't catch up with that one, one and two. But that's all Derek has needed so far. But as we talked at the beginning of the, of the telecast, Pete does not like to hit against guys he has not seen before. And you take this guy, Dick Botello, Derek Botello, he may get Pete out today. If Pete was to see him a week from now, he'd probably get two or three hits. Not that he won't get any today, but I guarantee it would be different next time. Pete may have Got an even router there. Well, there's the, that close pitch again. Like I say, they're putting a lot of pressure on the umpire. That was a very close pitch. I don't think Bob Engel is going to call him out on Not strikes two times, two in, times a in a row. No. Is he? <laughs> He's going to have to swing to be struck out. Well, we'll see a breaking ball here. Now it's a full count on Rose. Five hits shy of breaking Ty Cobb's all time hit record. Surprising thing with the Cubs is they still do not have anyone up in their bullpen. It's in the jet stream. That's Moreland back. A home run for Pete Rose. Pete Rose is four hits away from breaking Ty Cobb's record. And they're on their feet cheering him here at Wrigley Field. Rose's second home run of 1985. in the inning five nothing Reds here in the second inning in Chicago very seldom will you ever see a opposing player called out of the dugout on the road that shows the respect that the fans here in Chicago have for a good baseball player first pitch is a ball to Parker he drove in the Reds first run in the first inning here's a fastball and he gets it right in the middle of the plate and down a little bit in fact, that's the spot Pete puts the bat ball on the batting tee in practice hitting it. So he put it exactly where Pete would have wanted it. And with the dread stream going out, 
of all people who hit a home run, a guy that doesn't hit many. <laughs> but that's the way Pete Rose is. He seems to always arise to the occasion. 2-0 the count now on Parker, and it's 2-1. He's in the crouch and the fastball. He knows it's gone right there because he knows all you got to do is get it in the air to right field today. And Parker has his second hit and the Reds are all over Derek Botello. That is the fifth hit in the inning and seven hits already for the Reds here this afternoon. And there's action in that Chicago bullpen. Now Say is going to call time and go to the hill. That's John Perriman, the right hander, number 35, working in the pen. Nick Asaski popped out in the first inning. Nothing Reds second inning one strike we were talking a few minutes ago about the fact that the Reds are eight and a half games behind the Dodgers the problem being too few to play after this game this afternoon the Reds will have 30 games remaining 30 the Asaski is hit and that'll put runners at first and second Buddy Bell will be the ninth batter for the Reds here in the second inning. That is a fastball that Nick has no chance of getting out of the way of. I'm not sure that Derek wasn't trying to move him off the plate. I don't believe he was trying to hit him, but he was probably trying to move him off the plate just to make the Reds aware, hey, I'm out here still. John Perryman will come in to work here in the third inning as Botello goes one and two thirds gives up five runs to this point he's responsible for both men on base and the Reds have the lead and we'll be back in just a moment. Have you heard what Jerry Springer's been saying? About the home state crisis. It's enough to make any politician start thinking about life in the private sector. On stopping terrorists. We know where they are, we know who they are. It's time to go in and get them. On Cincinnati's rich and famous. There are ways to tell whether or not someone's in the socialite's blue book. If he or she cancels a dinner engagement because it's bowling night, they're not in it. Jerry Springer's commentary, weeknights at 11 on News 5. People make the difference. An elegant orchestra, the romantic melodies of Strauss, the stuff of dreams. Carmen de Leon and the Strauss Orchestra transports you to a carefree bygone era. Dream the night away at the Oktoberfest Ball, a 10th anniversary celebration of Oktoberfest Cincinnati, Friday, September 6th, in the historic Hall of Mirrors Ballroom of the Omni Netherland Plaza. For ticket information, call the Downtown Council at 579 3150. Reds with a 5-0 lead in the second inning. Milner a two-run triple, Parker an RBI double, and Pete Rose a two-run home run. And there's little Pete, Petey. Must be a holiday from school today, huh? I guess it is when your father needs four hits to break Ty Cobb's record. There's an exception for every rule. All right. The new pitcher is John Perlman, who has never appeared in a big league game. He's been in the Cubs organization since 79. He is 28 years of age. And was 7 and 12 at Iowa in the American Association during this 1985 season. He is a product of Baylor University. And he is originally from Dallas. It's got to be a thrill for this young man. John Perlman, P-E-R-L-M-A-N. And he'll face Buddy Bell. I imagine. Growing up in Dallas and 
going to school in Waco at Baylor University he may have heard of Mr. Bell of the Texas Rangers somewhere along the line and he's probably seen Buddy Bell get quite a few hits <laughs> he's, he's figuring I don't want to give him one here ball one on Buddy Bell Buddy struck out in the first inning against Derek Botello by the way John through the first pitch he kind of slings the ball he's going to get a lot of movement on the ball tailing back into the right handers looks like he throws a big sinker 